Hi everyone, happy Friday. I have another great book for you. Um, first of all, I just want to show you the cover. So I think you're probably wondering like why it's a girl with a sunset. You see the title, you see the author's name. The title's Brown Girl Dreaming, by the way, by Jacqueline Woodson. But what I really want to point out are these things. So it's a National Book Award winner. It's a Newbery Award winner. So Newbery is um, for novels. It's a really big award that not, that um, children's literature gets, kind of like a Caldecott for picture books. Um, and then it's also the Nonviolent Social Change winner. Oh, the Coretta Scott King Award winner as well. So three awards this book has gotten. So that tells us it's pretty special, right? Like, that's what I think. Um, so J Jacqueline Woodson is the author, and she's also the author of a picture book called The Other Side, which you may, your teacher may have read to you before. She's written lots of different books. Um, I read this over the summer. Loved it. Loved it. One of the things I like about um, Brown Girl Dreaming is the way that it's written. So I'm just going to show you um, it's written in prose, so like short line poem poems, but not rhyming poems, right? So it's written like that. Um, very similar to um, teachers, if you've ever read Inside Out and Back Again, very, written very similar style to that. So um, that's um, one really great thing about it. So uh, kind of like um, Catherine Applegate does with The One and Only Bob and The One and Only Ivan, each, like, this is a chapter. So I'm going to read a few pages so you can get an idea of, of the story a little bit and the background. I have read that this is based on her life and her her um, family, just so that you know, the author's family. So it's a bit of a memoir, too, which is also interesting and fun. So here we go. Chapter, well, this, this section is called A Girl Named Jack. Good enough name for me, my father said the day I was born. Don't see why she can't have it too. But the women said no. My mother first, then each aunt, pulling my pink blanket back, patting the crop of thick curls, tugging at my new toes, touching my cheeks. We won't have a girl named Jack, my mother said. And my father's sisters whispered, a boy named Jack was bad enough. But only so my mother could hear. Name a girl Jack, my father said, and she can't help but grow up strong. Raise her right, my father said, and she'll make that name her own. Name a girl Jack, and people will look at her twice, my father said, for no good reason but to ask if her parents were crazy, my mother's son. It went back and forth, and back, it, and back and forth it went until I was Jackie, and my father left the hospital mad. My mother said to my aunts, hand me that pen, wrote Jacqueline, where it asked for a name. Jacqueline, just in case someone thought to drop the I.E. Jacqueline, just in case I grew up and wanted something a little bit longer and further away from Jack. The next one's called The Woodsons of Ohio. My father's family can trace their history back to Thomas Woodson of Chilcot, Chilcot, said to be the first son of Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings, some say. This isn't so, but the Woodsons of Ohio know what the Woodsons coming before them left behind in Bibles and stories in history coming down through time. So... Ask any Woodson why you can't go down the Woodson line without finding doctors and lawyers and teachers, athletes and scholars and people in government, they'll say. We had a head start. They'll say Thomas Woodson expected the best of us. They'll lean back, lace their fingers across their chests, smile a smile that's older than time, say, well, it all started back before Thomas Jefferson Woodson, Thomas Jefferson Woodson of Chilcot, Chillicott, and they'll begin to tell our long, long story. The Ghosts of the Nelsonville House. The Woodsons are one of the few black families in this town. Their house is big and white and sits on a hill. Look up and see them, look up to see them through the high windows inside a kitchen filled with the light of a watery Nelsonville sun. In the parlor, a fireplace burns warmth into the long Ohio winter. Keep looking and it's spring again. The light's gold now and dancing across the pine floors. Once, there were so many children here, running through this house, up and down the stairs, hiding under beds and in trunks, sneaking into the kitchen for tiny pieces of icebox cake, cold fried chicken, thick slices of their mother's honey ham. Once, my father was a baby here, and then he was a boy, but that was a long time ago. 
In the photos, my grandfather is taller than everybody and my grandmother just an inch smaller. On the walls, their children run through fields, play in pools, dance in teen-filled rooms, all of them grown up and gone now. But wait, look closely. There's Aunt Alicia, the baby girl, curls spiraling over her shoulders, her hands cupped around a bouquet of flowers, only four years old in that picture and already a reader. Beside Alicia, another picture, my father, Jack, the oldest boy, eight years old and mad about something, or is it someone we cannot see? In another picture, my uncle Woody, baby boy, laughing and pointing, the Nelsonville house behind him and maybe my, his brother at the end of his pointed finger. My Aunt Anne in her nurse's uniform, my Aunt Ada in her university sweater, Buckeye to the bone, the children of hope and grace. Look closely, there I am in the furrow of Jack's brow, in the slyness of Alicia's smile, in the bend of Grace's hand. There I am, beginning. It'll be scary sometimes. My great-great-grandfather on my father's side was born free in Ohio, 1832. Built his home and farmed his land, then dug for coal when the farming wasn't enough. Fought hard in the war, his name in stone now on the Civil War Memorial. William J. Woodson, United States Colored Troops, Union, Company B, 5th Regiment. A long time dead, but living still among the other soldiers on that mount monument in Washington, D.C. His son was sent to Nelsonville, lived with an aunt, William Woodson, the only brown boy in an all-white school. You'll face this in your life someday, my mother will tell us over and over again. A moment when you walk into a room and there is no one like you. It'll be scary sometimes, but think of William Woodson and you'll be all right. Football dreams. No one was faster than my father on the football field. No one could keep him from crossing the line, then touching down again. Coaches were watching the way he moved, his easy stride, his long arms reaching up, snatching the ball from its soft pocket of air. My father dreamed of football dreams and woke to a scholarship at Ohio State University. Grown now, living the big city life in Columbus, just 60 miles from Nelsonville, and from there, Interstate 70 could get you on your way west to Chicago. Interstate 77 could take you south, but my father said no colored Buckeye in his right mind would ever want to go there. From Columbus, my father said, you could go just about anywhere. And I'm going to stop right there. So that is the beginning of Brown Girl Dreaming. Hope you find this a little bit interesting and you want to pick it up. Happy reading.